first session in the game training phase was defined and designed. So it wasn't so much about the conduct of the session and bringing the session to life with regards to task and promotion intervention and then the animation of the session. And we're probably going to look to go into that more this evening. But we'll still go back through the checklist and we'll still go through the defined design just as a recap of what we did from the first session. These boys uh, are the school boys. Uh, they'll be going away uh, in a couple of weeks' time up, up to Sydney uh, to represent ACT. And they won it last year, so there's no pressure this year for the, for the younger boys coming through. Um, but I think um, you'll agree that there's a, there's a hell of a lot of talent in uh, the ACT and, and, and this, this crop of boys uh, that have come from the NPL. Uh, will, will definitely do us proud, I'm sure. So they're still in in their trial phase themselves at the moment because at some point, boys unfortunately not going to make it through. So every time they're put in the shop window, that they're on trial for the coaches um, with, with Nagosh uh, and Phil going to take those boys as well. So we appreciate their sort of time and effort. The majority of them would have played yesterday either in the fir for first grade or for NPL 20s. So they're probably pulling up and maybe a little bit sore. And the plan was for, that, for them tonight probably just to do a blackboard session just in terms of tactics and shape and organisation. So we appreciate them coming in uh, and giving up their time this evening when it is cold and they've just played a game. So we're not going to go, we're not going to be too full on with them. But if, for those of you who attended the last, the, the first workshop, sorry, you'll remember that we only used the under-14s boys. But actually when it's bringing this to life and in this game training phase, more value, I hope, tonight in actually how we um, set ourselves up. So just as a, as a recap, and for these boys as well, the back of that first workshop that we delivered, we identified the main moment as being BP, so ball possession. When we have possession of the ball, this is how we want to play. Proactive football based on effective possession. You've heard the playing style statement. Um, you say it over and over again, and it's something that will continue to work its way through. Going back to the NPL licenses, that's the sort of uh, the brand of football that all of the clubs in the NPL uh, have said that they'd adhere to from their 20s down. All right, hopefully their first grade will be exactly the same. From their 20s down, and in terms of developing players as part of the FFA updated curriculum and the direction nationally we're taking with the FFA and the federations, proactive brand of football based on effective possession in BP. So that's what we're looking for tonight. So we worked spe uh, specifically with the numbers 7 and 11. So working with the two wide players being able to get into positions where they can create goal scoring opportunities, either to get into 1v1 situations in behind or to combine with the 9 and 10 to create goal scoring opportunities as well. And that's what we're really going to focus on tonight. But now it's more about the conduct. So now we've designed that session, we've set that session up, and that session will run very, very similar to the way that it worked in the last workshop that we delivered. We're now really going to focus and zoom in and synthesize that information in terms of what's the script? So what's our script? So the boys turn up to training, they know exactly what the session's going to be about, because I've just explained it to you guys now, and hopefully they're listening as well. Already got it into a space by which we've defined the session to see the focus on the 7 and the 11, and how we get them to good opportunities to create goal scoring opportunities, like I say, either in behind, creating Monday ones, or to combine with the 9 and 10. So, in terms of setup, um, spoke to Gosh earlier on today, just in terms of who, who's available, who's not available. So, the practice itself is ideally set up. So, looking with the defending team, the goalkeeper working from uh, right to left, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. So we're sitting with two sitting in and the 7 and the 11. This becomes important because of shape. Because through our analysis and the defined design, we've already seen that the team that we played against the week before, that's how they set themselves up. So we, as coaches, we're now taking the analysis from the team that we played against, so the team we're possibly coming up against the weekend after, and that's the way they set themselves up. Back four, go narrow and compact, six and eight go tucked in when they're in BPO. So when the opposition have possession of the ball, which is the blue team here, and the seven and 11 bring themselves in, get tucked in and withdraw. Because we've only got the players, we eliminate the number nine from this particular uh, pr uh, team here and the number 10. So we're working that step shape defensively. But if you was to go to the 11, the 11, the 11 your number 10 would be in. So the point facing forward, the triangle in the middle third, and your number nine would be in as well, possibly dropping uh, to come in as that extra defender as well. 
So that's the shape of the defending tee. But our focus is on the blue tee. We'll go back to the whole shape and divine design. That's the way they lay themselves up. That's the way that they defend. But because they're narrow and compact, that's where we've seen there might be an opportunity to expose them in wide areas. So that's the reason that we have the shape set up as it is in here. So going with the blue team then. Proactive brand of football based on effective possession. Seven, not them. And a seven and eleven are going to stay high and wide as often as possible. Hugging the touch side, can they get in positions where they can face forward and therefore either play forward or run at players 1v1? If not, do they just roll out and combine with the 9 and 10 to create goal scoring opportunities? So in this instance here, 7 and 11 is going to be the focus. 9, I want to stay high and central, play with the back to goal or off the shoulder. 10, links up with the number 9 as often as possible, or the 7 and the 11 and the six and eight and the four patrol. So it's, again, it's point facing forward. And I've taken out the three and the four this time and left in the two and the five. Because as we work through the script this evening and then based upon how we actually play our football, we want the two and the five to join in with the seven and 11 as well. And there may be opportunities, for example, if the seven can go inside, the two and the five can get on the outside to create that opportunity. So not just thinking about themselves, when they get on the ball, but if the opportunity presents itself, they might just tuck inside and then we can get the full back on the overlap as well, third man run. So those are, that's just a brief outline as to what we're going to go tonight. Got all that information, lads? Everyone happy? Good to go? All right, so what we'll do is we'll get into it in terms of the passing practice again. So we what all we talked about, doesn't matter whether you're in the uh, skill acquisition phase or the game training phase or the performance phase, can we get perception, decision making and execution? What do they see? What do they hear? And based upon that, what are their actions going to be? What decisions are they going to make? And is the execution good with the technique? All of these boys here have got good technique because that's why they're this far advanced in terms of the school boys' process for, uh, for selection. So all I want you to do, lads, just very quickly, doesn't matter whether it's an attacking <coughs> or defending team. Brownie, you're going to go and be the number one, so you assume that position down there. The rest of you, I just want you to drop into a position for me. So just go and stand at a number that is, applies to you, or applicable to you. Gosh might now change you. 15, yeah, so that's fine. So just go and stand in position that goes through with you. Just leave the bib on the floor for now and just stand over the top of it. So going back to define, decide. So we've identified Best practice for this session in terms of my organisation and setup. I've done my session and I've got my session in place. It requires 18 players. Unfortunately, tonight, Tom Milicevic has pulled a sickie. He's pretending to be sick up there, but he's still sat out in the freezing cold. Flu, injury, etc., etc., restricts players from being able to participate in the session. That being the case now, my focus is going to be in here, but I still want to keep it as realistic as possible. So we're lucky the positions that they've actually dropped themselves into. 9-11, fantastic. Number 10, 6 and 8. So they're probably going to be the main numbers that I'm going to work with. So as I explained with the 2 and the 5, because of the numbers that we actually have, I'm more than happy to now possibly just eliminate the 2 and the 5 in this instance here, because we've only got players, I want to try and keep it as realistic as possible. So if that's how they defend, we want to make sure that the attacking team still has the realistic options or they're going to be presented the same sort of challenges. If I take a player out, it might start to open up gaps, but we'll play along with that. So I've just taken the two and the five out. As coaches and through your mind's eye, you might do something different. In here then, he now hasn't got a position. So I'll just drop him in as a joker, as the orange player, and he'll play for both teams for me now. So whenever they're attacking, you need to try and find the orange in there. Whenever you're attacking, if you can't play forward, you can always go back. You play number three or four for this team, or you'll play as a number 10 for that team. Okay? So what we've done is, is now this is set up, is out there. And I'll eliminate the two and the five at the moment. But all I want you to do is, if we just have a look at it very carefully, the uh, sorry, team here, you're going to be on the yellow markers. 
So you can put your bib on now and then just go and stand yellow marker, exactly the position that you're in now. This team here in the green markers. So go and stand in those positions now. So more than welcome if you want to come down. If you want to come down into here, you're more than welcome to. If you're happy up there, that's your choice. But I'm going to be doing a lot of talking down here as well. So it might be worthwhile just to come in behind. You might get a better picture from that side. Looking to work with the 7 and the 11. So don't worry, I'm not going to pick on you. So as we've talked, as we said, uh, as we mentioned earlier on, we're looking for perception, decision making and execution all the time. So I'll have it involved all the way through. So to start with boys, just want to drop, just drop a couple of balls down into Brownie. We'll start from here, so for the purpose of this exercise now, you're going to work with the floating. Brownie, you're going to start the practice. So the white team, you're just working together. So now you're in your positions. Brownie, you can play out to anyone on the white team. White team, just shuffle the ball around until everyone's got a touch. Ball back Brownie, and then you go again, Brownie, back out to the white team only. Now, in here, blue team, ball starts with the joker. Played in, everyone has a touch. Roll the ball back out to the joker again, and then we be going. One ball for each team to start with, and not restricted to your markers, so you can go any you want. But that's your start. To defender, how do you lose the marker? How do you pull off to give yourself that bit of space? Can you get into a position where the player with the ball can play straight into your feet, nice and early? Both teams, you go, play. Just in terms of, uh, this is a warm-up. So this is a warm-up that I'll probably work with every single session. So I've not restricted them in terms of they have to decide, they have to play to market A, to B, to C. They're making the decisions based upon what's coming at them, where pressure's coming from. I like to have two teams playing through each other because straight away now they've got to get their head up and they've got to be thinking all the time, where can I play into so it hits his feet. They're on the move, problems are full, and it's another great one. It doesn't matter what main moment that we're working in now, either ball possession, ball possession, opposition, or transition, there's PDE that's involved straight away. Could probably get more communication, more movement off the ball. But it's nice and relaxed to start with, and we'll just look to increase this tempo as we take ourselves through it. <laughs> Alright, just go back to your start positions. Once you're in those start positions, just take yourself through a dive flip. Just go through your own routine. So whatever you want to do, you know your body's better than me. And again, it doesn't matter whether we're in year one of game training, so with the under-14s or the under-17s in year four, we can actually take them through this routine, get them into good habits. Even with the younger ones, if you want, there's no problem with doing that. You might be a little bit more prescriptive in terms of the routine that you go through, but at this point, I would expect all of these boys to know their own routine, and they take themselves through that all the time. They know their bodies, they can be honest with themselves, and we'll get them going again. This time, exactly the same practice, but the two teams. You now have two balls working, so Brownie, as soon as you've got one out, get the second one out. Exactly the same in here as well. So two balls going all the time. 
So can increase the tempo, can we increase the pace, punch the passes in. Ready, great, off you go, great. Punch it in. So a little bit sharper with the passes. Get good touches. So just at this moment, this is part of our passing practice. And in terms of the components that we set up, we'll have the passing practice, positioning practice, then we'll go into game training, training game. In this passing practice, I'm not going to get bogged down with doing too much coaching. But there might be an opportunity after we go through a few progressions and they've gone through their diflex that might become a little bit more prescriptive in terms of where I want them to be. So as soon as the uh, defending team has played the ball in, how do they recover to get back to their start position? Likewise with the attacking team. If we're looking in this case here to be working with our front three, and in particular the seven and the 11, how do they get themselves into a position nice and early, depending on where two balls are, to get into that wide position to be able to face forward? At what point do they have to come in to probably support the pass? But I can plant that seed and do that, not actually by stopping the group, but as an individual, just give them a few pointers. And much the same, as I said, depending on what year you're in in that game training, whether it's year one, two, three, or four, you might just work with the individuals in being more prescriptive, going in and coaching on the run, so not stopping the whole session. With the younger ones, you might need to stop the whole session and then build it up. But remember, warm up. We're going to save the majority of the teaching points for the game training component. And relax it again. Just go back to your start positions. Go relax again. So just whilst you're taking yourself through it, lads, just uh, just working with the white team now, still in our passing practice. All we're looking to do is now, once you've played the ball on, how do you get back into your defensive position nice and early? That's the white team. So where you are and where the ball is on the pitch, are you able to support and keep yourself as close to your start position again, getting nice, narrow and tight as you are the pit? The blue team. Objective now, yes, we want to try and work it around so everybody gets a touch. But how quickly now can we get the ball into the 7 and 11? All right, 7 and 11 now, as often as you can, if you can receive the ball in space and facing forward, can you just get down to the byline and then look to cut the ball back, either into the number 9 or the number 10 as often as possible, based upon what you see. If not, might have somebody else to come in and support. We just roll it out again, either the six and the eight. Yep. So as often as possible, blue team, seven and 11, can we get it into them early? We'll buy one ball to start with, but then we will introduce the second. Zip it a little bit quicker if you can. Off we go. Quick. So the indirect coaching concept now is I'm starting to get them to think without even telling them. So there's probably going to be something in this session here where we are going to look to get it into the 7 and 11 as quickly as possible. So as coaches now, can you be thinking if that is going to be the task for this evening, what might be a possible good team task to have? Sharper brownie, a bit quicker. Let's get a second ball in. Second ball in. Sharper, 
and again and again. That's all right. Tidy it up. <whistles> all right, back to start positions. Well done. Last one then. If you need to do your stretches, go through them. So just be listening now. So yes, the attacking team, blue team, want to get it into 7 11 night and early. Can you get it out your feet? Get down that touch line and get the ball back in. Sorry, over into the 9 or the 10. What we're looking for now is for the white team as well. Can you get into those defence positions nice and early once you've moved the ball on? But we're looking for it to be a lot sharper. How often, and I think the, the grief from this point here, at what point are you actually getting your head up? Not until you've taken your first touch. So now I want to see if we can be playing as often as possible on a minimum amount of touches. So you're taking pictures early, seeing it earlier. So if I see that I can get my head up and play on one touch, I'll do it. How do the players off the ball support the player on the ball? Has he always got an option left, right and middle? So how do we put ourselves in positions, attacking and defensively, where we can support both on and off the ball? So we can still be a lot sharper all over the park, but you make those decisions. Help each other out through that communication, through your positioning. Off you go again. Three, last one. Side it up. Well done. Good lad. Just. Good lad, Georgie. Good lad, Nico. Good. Good lad, AD. Not on, not on, just move it on. Good, good. Love it. Well done, boys. Good. Okay, we just hold it there. Hold it there, well done. Go back to your start positions again. One ball with each team. So just again, just going back into the components of the session. Passing practice, just gone through a few progressions in here. Just to now just add that, so there's a little bit of competition in there. We'll still have working with uh, the blue team. The blue team only. And here, Brownie. All we've got to look to do now for 7 and 11, as soon as the blue team can get onto the ball, all right, and receive it from 7 and 11 nice and early, you can now look to get your shot on goal. But you can now look to get the ball into the number 9 or the number 10. So, can that All right, so now you need to be aware as well. So, it's just one ball, just one ball. We'll start with, with oranges playing in. What team defensively just get your shape? Off we go again. Three. So this is, I'm, I've actually skipped, so I'm skipping the positioning part, part of the practice. In terms of time, we're just condensing it slightly and we're going to get into the game training component. But there's nothing wrong with this in here, just as an advanced part of the session just to get them into good it's an early start to think about the, the scripts now in terms of the start the organisation of the session and the shape in particular we'll start from here again from here play up play.
too, I'm not too worried now because you wouldn't realistically have your back four sitting that deep all the way through. Last one from the Joker play. And we can see the tempo again has already got up. So tempo's back up again. Last part of the warm up for him. And relax it there. Well done, boys. Brilliant. Do me a favour. Just pick up the markers. Go and get yourself a drink. Brownie, just keep a couple of balls down there. George, just chuck that in the back of the net. Brownie, back of the net. Go and get yourselves a drink, lads. That's just, to, that's just to get them going, a little bit of understanding in terms of that, the, the organisation of the session. The bibs are already out. We've already established that the ideal situation was to have 18 players. 18 players in there with this particular setup as we've got it now. We've already established that we've only got 15 in this, in this situation. Oh, sorry, 17 players, 15. We've eliminated the number two and the number five, and we now go to this sort of shape. So this is the shape that we actually have. So we talked about the, uh, the, the defending team and how they'll actually set themselves up, and the attacking team and how they'll set those, them up as well. So defensively, we want to make sure that they do stay narrow and they do stay tight, because that's the opposition, that's the analysis that we've done through the des uh, defined design. And now we're going to go into the conduct of the session and more about the script of the session now as well. So indirectly through the passing practice that we've just done, and we do exactly the same thing in the positioning game as well, is that we've just started to plant the seed in terms of which players are going to become really prominent in terms of this session and how we set that session up and which players we're going to work with. As I've started to plant the seed with the boys in there, I've asked you to be thinking about now a possible global task, a task for the players collectively as a team to come up with, based upon the fact that we're dealing with the 7-11 getting into uh, goal scoring opportunities. And how you phrase that, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so we'll set it up and uh, we'll look to go back into your start position, boys. Go back into the start positions, nice and early. Rowley, let's go. So now, so now what we uh, again in terms of the organisation for the, the setup of the passing practice, we actually had we actually had opportunities for them to be able to play in this area here. So I've actually restricted their space because I've taken because I've taken the two and the five out when it comes to being realistic. What we might be a problem now for the attacking team. If the white team wins the ball back, where can they now hurt us nice and early? In those wide areas. So what might we be able to do to stop that from happening? In terms of our organisation. Put either put a restriction on them coming forward. How can we force that restriction? Goal centrally. Or we might even be able to just take the channels out and just eliminate that area as well. So there's no right to right, it's entirely up to you, but we're going back to the defined design. But in terms of tonight and the numbers that we have, that presents us with a problem. So again, when we look at one up, one down, have you got that in your locker where you can actually say, okay, tonight we haven't got the two and the five, so we can't actually use those players. And I've taken those players out. You might decide to take other players out. It's entirely up to you which ones you take out. But for this exercise, I think that it will work all right but now I might have to have that consideration where we do just take those channels out to stop them from being able to play into those areas nice and early. Because after all, the session this evening is for us in BP and working with the blue team. So we'll have a look at how it's set up now, and I might just park that one for the time being and then introduce it a little bit later on. So just in terms of, lads, just in terms of the, the session itself, you're now going to go into the same setup as what you was doing in the passing practice. 
The rules, the rules of the practice now is that it'll either start with the joker, it'll either start with the goalkeeper. All right, I will make that, I'll make that call of who it starts with. The white team, if you win possession of the ball as quickly as possible, can you get it into the joker? But it only counts as a goal if the joker receives it in this channel here. So halfway into here, that's the only way the joker that counts as a goal. As I said before, when we were over there in terms of our organisation, the joker's going to play for both teams. All right, so if he wins the ball in there, I want you just to switch it straight back into Brownie and then we go again. All right, if the blue team wins the ball back, you're now on the blue team. Okay, you're on the blue team in here. That's what we're looking for. Blue team, all you're looking to do is score, but you need to stay on side. That's all you've got to do. <coughs> no. Start with the joker. Off we go, please. for me and just to pass that question down here. Because it'll be interesting to see if anyone else has picked up on it. Okay? So yeah, just come down here. You picked it? Yeah, yeah. You, you picked it already. rules again so we understand can we get it in to the joker from the white team and him receiving it in this area here from now on you can only play into him if he's in this area here okay so that's what we're looking for if you can't you might have to roll out and start again just a great question that's come out um, from the from the crowd out here it's in terms of the organisation. So first of all, what's the main moment? Ball possession. So in terms of the, the rules here now, if we're working with the blue team and it's ball possession, ideally where do we want it to be starting as often as possible? Going into which team? Into the blue team. So restrictions there. So all I've done is I've chucked it in and it comes straight out, which is fantastic. The question that was asked is why would you start it from Brownie if the focus is going to be on the blue team and in ball possession. Alright, so there's going to start, we'll start to drop in a couple of those things now, just to see if we pick up. But already it's starting, it's, what it tells me is, is that from the floor now, you're starting to go through that process. Start, organisation. Attitude, ability, spot on. No issues at all. Understanding, a few of the rules, you might need to clarify that a little bit, which we've just done now. Brownies is thick as shit, so we'll have to go through it two or three times for him. Yes, you can. Now to receive it on this side, Brownie. Okay. 
So that's what we'll look to do now. All right, so from now on, the ball, ball is going to start with the joker in here, playing into the blue team. So you need to get on the ball, make sure you've got plenty of balls in there. I'm going to put one further restriction on it now. I'm told him that he can only work <coughs> and receive the ball behind the line in here, but he can only patrol inside of the D as well. Doesn't matter which team he's playing for. Okay? Why might I put that restriction on it as well? For example, if he's on the blue team, he represents what numbers? It's the three and the four. So in a game, would I have the three and four biting off into those areas there? So I'm just trying to keep it realistic again. Would I have him really going too far, much further than that line? You might even reduce it even further. But for the time and for now, that's what we're restricting to. Again, when he's on, when he's on the, the white team, which number does he represent? He's the number 10. So we wanted to sort of stay in more of these positions to be able to pick it up and link in with your number nine as it would be on the opposition team. We're just trying to keep it re as realistic as possible. All right, off it goes. So BP, working with the blue team, want to try to get the ball into the seven and the 11. Yeah, that's another restriction that you've got. Good, better, better. Okay, I'm relaxed at this. So I'll tuck one in straight away. White team, as soon as you win the ball first, you've only got 10 seconds to get it into the Joker. Otherwise, the, the game's dead, starts with the Joker again. Blue team, as often as possible. As soon as you win the ball, how do we get into the start positions nice and early? We're 7 and 11. High and wide, nine central, ten linked up to number nine as well. What number are you, Georgie? What number are you playing? Eight, coming to here. <coughs> Off we go, okay. Just stay in here for now, Georgie. Good. Play up! Step one! Step one! Now it might be on. Well done, Mike. 
Mikey, good lad, Mikey. Okay, and relax in there. All right, so in terms of the wide team, the shape of the organisation, uh, not too bad. Narrow and tight, <coughs> forcing them. But how often are we, able, are we able to, how often we had the chance to get the 7 11 on the ball? So now, can we think of a global theme task for the blue team now, based on the fact that we want to get 7 on 11 on the ball earlier? At the moment, they amble across. So we've already asked them. Right, so today's objective, we want to get the ball into the 7 and 11 as often as possible to create goal scoring opportunities. So how as a team do we get ourselves into a position where we can get them facing forward and the ball into them as early as possible with their first touch is going forward? So as often as possible as a team, how do we put ourselves in a position where we can support them and get 7 and 11 to be able to face forward, get into the face behind if we can? From there, from here, we ready to go. We ready to go. Great. First, who can we hit? Not on, not on. Brilliant, good. On again, good. Well done, good. There go. Opportunity. Finish it off. From here. We're playing again. From here. Start positions. Play on. Play. Brilliant. Better. All right. So now, now we've established that we want to get the ball into 7 and 11. Nice and out. We've managed to get the ball. Managed to get the ball into the seven on four occasions in the last two minutes. How many times has he taken his first touch? Go. Zero. So now we've got the player, now we've got the team task. Now we can possibly be thinking about the player task associated with the global team task. When the ball goes into the seven, there's a teaching opportunity now. Would I go in straight away and address it? Possibly not, because I'm going to leave it to see whether he might be able to figure it out. He's not figuring it out, like I said, four opportunities. So now we might go in and give that little coaching point. So we'll set it up. And I don't want to try to recreate it from here, from here. We'll play it again. Off you go. Play. So we'll see if it happens again. Good lad, Marco. And hold it there. Just wind it back to Mikey. Wind it back to Mike Jordan, do it quickly, play it. So can we get the ball into 7 and 11, got the ball into the 7, no problems at all. Five occasions now, first touch has gone where? Back towards our own goal. So a player task now, 7 and 11, if you can get into a wide position as often as possible, how do you take your first touch so you're going forward? And if you can go forward, can we be positive and get ourselves into a 1v1? If you don't think you can get in behind the space in a 1v1, now you might roll out. So brilliant. Marco, Mikey, getting you into positions where you're in there not and wide, but how do you get into that position where you can take your first touch, face it forward, and hopefully get into a 1v1 now? Wind the ball back. Just, what's that? Just back a bit, Crescent, just go back a bit, play into him. Show me that you understand it. Yep. Play again. Play on. Go on, take him on. Be positive, be positive. And there's a player who's got pace, he's able to keep the ball, but he's reluctant to do it. Set it up again. Well done, Mikey. Play. Good. Relax, relax, set it up again. No problems, don't worry. Can we play again. Good. Just move it, keep the ball moving. Good. Now we can get him in again. Well done. Great first touch, Marco. Good lad, well done, well done. 
shape as well, Blues, keep it realistic. <laughs> too tight, too tight. your start positions nice and early. So again, just in terms of keeping it realistic, Blues, yes it's BP, are we all going to bomb on at the same time? So we need to keep our shape as well. Be aware in here that even though it's about ball possession, that's keeping the ball, if they win the ball back, they can play into them and that's a goal. So how do we make sure there's insurance there that they can't play that one in? So both the six and eight might not be able to bomb on. Right, so we'll be thinking about that as well. So now we've got the 7 and the 11 facing forward. How do possibly the 6 and the 8 support? So if we can't play forward, we can roll back out into the 6 and the 8 now. Yes? Happy with that? So how do you put yourselves in a position as the 6 and the 8 to support the 7 and the 11 possibly? All right. Again, if you had the numbers, you might have your 2 and the 5 in there. And that might be a player task for those as well. All right, so six and eight, try not to crowd that space out. Get into a position. If we can't play forward, you can support the pass. And we roll out and start again. Play again, off we go. Play. So again, the global team task remains the same. Can we get the ball into seven and 11? But the opportunity is there. How do we get the six and the eight? And now already they're starting to drop off, which just leaves the space in behind, possibly. I'm not telling them how to do it. I've asked them, how can you get yourself in that position? Well done. Play on. Play. Good. So keep the shape. So can we keep insurance if we can? So if they win it back, now you're in a good position. Tidy up, tidy up. Not him. Good. Now be thinking, now we might be thinking about, we've worked with the 7 and the 11, given the 6 and the 8 a possible player task, what now might be really looking for from the 9? Too wide? All the time. And what's happening now? Crowd it out. So just watch it, just let it build up, just watch him, watch his movement. And this might be a, a problem that you'll find because the nine's not getting onto the ball often enough, so now he's getting out and he's thinking about himself because he wants to get on there. Not, where that's not a problem, he's crowding the space at the seven and the 11 possibly. Does the 10 need to go in there? So what might be a possible player task for the 10 now? If we can't play into the seven and the 11 now, we might bypass those and can we go straight into the number nine? So just as the game's building up and as we're watching it, what are the possible player tasks that you're now starting to see through your mind's eye in terms of the global team task and the play associated with that as well? Start positions early. Well done, Marco. Good. Better. Might roll out, roll out to the west. Now. Bypass. In no insurance. Go. Set it up. Okay, just hold it there. Just hold it there. All right. So now we need to be thinking about we've worked 7 and 11. Can we get them facing forward on their first touch? White team, responsive to that now, are starting to pick them up. The two and the five are getting into good positions where they're staying close and forcing them to arrive untouched. We can't possibly get out there every single time. Six and eight supporting quite well. Could possibly do a little bit better in terms of that insurance as well. But now the focus will go to a nine and a ten. Geordie, we keep getting sucked into areas and you're bringing two or three players with you now. So how is the number nine? Can you keep yourself in a position where we can still get it into the seven and eleven? If we can't get it into the seven and eleven, can you possibly present now and we can go straight into you? So if I can, 
as often as possible, the 10, how are you going to support that as well? He needs to be able to see, yeah, get into a position, play that, how do you now support him? All right, so now be thinking about who do we want to get onto the, where's the space now? How can you better support it at the 10? How do you can better support that as a 10? Go on, come, come, do it, do it. Can you face forward? Play. Who might you now be able to hit? 7 and 11. So now we can't get it to the 7 and 11, but we might be able to combine between the 9 and the 10 to get it into 7 and 11. This is how we defend. Narrow, compact. Can't hit straight into them because Mossy might be able to get out. Zach might be able to get out on the other side. That's still the team task. But we might be able to play that one into there. Out to the 10. Be able to play into the 7 and the 11. Only when it's on. Keep the spaces with the 6 and the 8 as well. Back into here with the Joker. White team quality, by the way. Keep it going. Play on. Play. Roll out again. Can you get high and central again? Bang. Come on, Mikey. Roll it out. Marco. Quality, son. Quality. Good. Good. Bounce out. Can you get control ball? Quality. Play. Play. Play back in. Get central. Get it rolled out. Good. Go in. Good pin, Mikey. No luck. Play on. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. From here, play again. Off we go. Start positions again. Good. Good. Make it, love it, don't mind that. Play up! Well done, and set it up again. Positions, get into positions, and play again. Is he in? Oh, can we get it in? He's on. Good. Both gone in. Okay, relax it there. Just stay where you are. Just stay where you are. Get the ball back into Mikey again. <coughs> so again, we've established that they go narrow and they go tight. But they go narrow and tight because the number nine stays central. Again, Jordy coming in, closing down the space and restricting us in here. Go back central if you can. <coughs> go on, go away, go away. Straight away now he's got to make a decision. Because that's how they actually defend at the weekend. So we need to make sure that the number nine now, player tar, stays high, stays central, stays away. Straight away by making that move in there. Danny's now had to make a decision. He's decided to go. What have we just created again? A 1v1. So the global team task is, can we get it into 7 and 11 to create 1v1s, a goal scoring opportunity? <coughs> If I keep coming in here, I'm going to bring the defender with me. Now they're doubled up. Individual player tasks, stay high, stay central, stay out of the way. If he can't get into a 1v1 situation, might be able to roll out in there, no problems at all. Or I might be able to just play straight into there and off of that. What's your cue going to be, Marco? Just into there. Boom. Straight away, we're taking the whole team out into there. Got space, got time to attack. Brilliant, Marco, good. Play the ball back in here. Play back in. Play on, play. Stay high and central, Jordan. Good, good. Better, better. Pick him over. Don't have to force it. Love it, love it. Go on. Well done, Zaki. 
Come on, finish it off. There you go, good. From the air, play on. Set it up. Set it up, let's go. We're playing again, we're playing again. Good, good. Don't have to force. Don't have to force. Might roll out. Lakers again. Move it on, move it on. Too many, too many. Good. Good lad, Jordy. Too tight. Good lad, Britain. Don't have to force the passes, eh? Good lad, Marco. Good. Not on, not on. Good recovery. Roll out. Go on, Marco again. No, from here, play up. Last couple. Jordy, good. Good. Brilliant, brilliant boys, well done. And hold it there, just hold it there. Hey, so we've combined ever so well to get it into Mikey's in a 1v1. Georgie, what possibly have you done by going into that space in there? The objective here is to get the 7 and 11 in 1v1 situation. Love your energy, love your drive, you want to get in there, but we've just taken the extra defender in. Now we have to roll out. I can get my 10 back closer to the 9. 10 closer to the 9, so what's your name? Nick, just go closer to him. Now the Crescent has got to make a decision. Do you stay out? Now, got to make a decision again. Something to think about. So again, the 6 and the 8. Your player task now. How do we keep the space? If they can't get into a 1v1, we just roll back out here. Yes? Play up, play. Good. That's just like the confusion at the moment. It's all the time. All the time. You just run to him. Good, there we go, love it. Can you support him though? Can you support him then? Don't have to go all the way in. Play on Sam, play from you Sam, play on. Good, now we can play. Good. No luck, well done Kresic. Play on. Good recovery, great insurance, love that. So what's happening now naturally is yes, we can get the 7 and the 11 in face forward with their first touch. But where are we realistically going to get them to cause more problems? Higher up the park. I think Mark, I feel for your boy because there's been ample opportunity to get it here. But because we're so right-sided, that's all we can see. So again, now it's about 7 and 11. So don't restrict ourselves to opening up one way. But now your task is as individuals. Yes, can you receive it facing forward, but can we get you receiving the ball facing forward 
further up the pitch. I want you higher up the pitch, but don't get caught offside. So how do you get into the position where you can receive it? First touch facing forward, but higher up the park. Because they're now getting in these areas here. Great position, a little bit higher up if we can. Can we start to hurt them? Off we go, great. Just move on. Why do have to take that extra touch? Good. Mikey, love it. There you go. There we go, love it, good, well done. Oh, never mind. From here, from here, couple more. Here, sec. Play on, great. Good. Go straight in, go straight in. Still runs even it deep. Last couple, play on, play on. So again, as, you start, as you're starting to work through it yourselves now, in terms of the, the script itself, there's loads of things that we can actually work on. So we've established that we're working with the 7 and 11 predominantly. The team task is, can we get it into 7 and 11 to create goal scoring opportunities, or combine with that 9 and 10 like we said before. And then we're now starting to look at the individual player task. There's a whole raft of player tasks that you can actually go through. In terms of your session, Try, if you can, not to get bogged down with, you've got 10 points, for example, in your session. But going through every single coaching point because that's what you had in your plan. It's not happening. I'm going through them quite rapidly because just giving you different scenarios. But if it's not happening where we can't get the 7 and the 11, for example, facing forward on his first touch, don't then bypass it and then go to your next coaching point. Stick with it until you get it right. And then when you go into your evaluation at the end, it might well be because of the setup that you have. So in terms of the, the uh, before you even get to the script, just in terms of your start, organization, attitude, ability, understanding, shape and self, and going through that process, have you got it all right? Or is it something you need to think about again? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And again, but now as coaches, you start to see that through your own mind's eye, the possibility, the things that you might do for the individuals. Yeah. But that's the opportunity there, so we'll stop it. Stop there! Hold it there! Hold it there! So it's, that's what we're saying now, is that we can combine through the 9 and the 10. So in terms of we're getting the 9 to stay high and central, Marco's taken up a great position. Mossy's now staying in touch with him, but where does that expose them now? So now, instead of you playing, <laughs> pinning it up in here, what's the run you might be able to make based upon you've had a little look across the shoulder, we might be able to just play that one either through there or over the top. Now they're all looking at that way, just play back, might just be able to play that one into there and he might be able to get that as well. So is it across the shoulder or off the shoulder for the number nine? We've got him high and central, but now his player task might change. So you stay in high and central, now you might need to make the consideration, do I play across the shoulder, pin and protect and bounce back to the number 10, or can I get off the shoulder and get into the space behind again? So that, like I say, there's so many different op options, so many opportunities to work on individual player tasks, but in terms of this time that we have here, in terms of this particular session, you're not going to get it all in one session. So you might work on this for four or five sessions, depending on what uh, year you're in, in your game training as well, and what the players have. But I think overall, just play on boys, play on the game. Overall, like I say, it's just to demonstrate there's a whole raft of things to go through. So if you've done the fight design, now it's the conduct, now it's the script, and then it's about the task that you set, do you observe the task, and what moment you pick to intervene. So the task, observation and intervention now. And we'll let it run just for a couple more minutes. Yeah. <coughs> 
Over. So we've gone through sort of the, the, the passing practice, no positioning game. Now into the game training where we do the majority of our teaching. This now is possibly a training game where we might actually introduce a goal at the other end, keeping it as realistic to the game as possible. But this is the opportunity where we'll get to see if they've actually taken the information on board. So give them the reward as well, that they've listened and they've worked hard. You might have to revisit it again, which is no problems at all. But now the game is being played. In terms of each of those years in the game training from year one for under 14 to year four or under 17, if this you've got this set up here, is football being played again? The football's being played, they're enjoying it. We can stand and have a chat for an hour now and they'll sit here all night and they'll play. And they'll, they'll soon enough they'll start to figure it out for themselves. So the, 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 the tendency is a lot of the time, especially when we get into the game training part, that's the teaching part now, so I've got to get in and stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. We don't have to. Just let them play. Pick your moments to do it and make it count. Because after a while, if we just keep going in and stopping it every two minutes, they'll switch off. So we've set the task, now we observe it. Now we pick the moment to intervene. Global team task, player task, and then go into possibly what the cues are as well. Sorry? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying that we don't pigeonhole too much. Especially Okay, relax it there. Just go and get yourselves another drink. Brownie, just bring those balls back up for me. Can we get the markers in as well? And the balls back into the bag. And again, just in terms of there where we, we're working. Guys, just want to um, actually, we'll take ourselves, we'll just take a walk off to the side. Just bring all the gear in. Bring all this stuff in as well. So just, uh, yeah. just in terms of uh, where we're at from the from this evening then, but like I say, so it's basically, uh, lads, just come in. Get, we'll just get these into their, into their cool down and done. Um, just in terms of their attitude and application this evening, bearing in mind that some of them have played first grade in the 20s yesterday. Just give those a round of applause for me if you can. Thank you very much, lads. Um, good luck uh, for a couple of weeks' time. All, all the best stuff at the, the school boys, and um, I'm, I'm sure that you'll, you'll do us all proud. Uh, I'll leave you uh, with Hoppo and Goshi now uh, to go through your cool down. And like I say, I see you around the trap soon. So thank you very much, boys. Thanks a lot, eh? Well done. So um, just in terms of where we're at from, the, from this evening then. So we, we're going through that whole process of the find the side. And off the back of that, we're now going into the scripts. And now the animation, task, observation, and intervention. And how you actually work your way through that. There's a whole raft of information, like I say, that we've been through, that we've put, put in uh, tonight. And then as, through your own mind's eye as coaches, it's how you actually synthesize that and you structure it in terms of the sessions you deliver. 
not going to get possibly all of those coaching points across in one session. And if you're not happy with where you're at in terms of the, the team task, or the, sorry, the individual player task off the back of the team task, just stick with those ones, get used, get them down, nailed down, get to a point where you're happy with that before you move on to the next one. In terms of the way that we delivered it tonight, it's just to give you a sort of an idea of the different player tasks that you might have associated with that global team task. And then the cues possibly we didn't really touch on off the back of that as well. So where you have all would have received, if you registered, if you registered for the course and signed up to it, you've all received the coaching process. And that's in the senior from five to 10. And in terms of the team model, and that's where the, the FFA's team model becomes very, very important as well. Because it gives you that starting, or it gives you that platform and that foundation to be able to plan your sessions based around how you actually see the game being played. But in terms of the team model that the FFA have set up, it's just a skeleton of this is how we actually want to play. And like I said, yeah, we picked the main moment, which is ball possession, proactive brand of football based on effective possession. How do we actually see that being delivered now? Depending on the main moment, it might be, be different, but you've always got that resource. You've always, there's always something there with that uh, team model for you to go to and use that as your platform, your foundation, to set yourself up in terms of your planning. Define, design, and then it makes it very easy then to go in, or it gets a lot easier, should I say, to go into the conduct and then the evaluate part of the session afterwards. So once you've actually delivered your session, if you're not entirely happy with it, what might you do next time if you were to revisit that session? And as you start to build that portfolio of session plans up, it's easy to go back through and actually just modify a session instead of having to start the session from scratch. In terms of the NPL and where we're at, and in terms of uh, the capital football teams that we have, that's a requirement of all of our coaches to plan for every single session. They've done the periodization. In terms of the NPL, application process, all the applications are now in. And having spoken to the technical directors, they've done youth development plans. But as part of the application, the youth development plans haven't been included. So my first question going into this round, first round of applications is why haven't they included it? Criteria two and criteria three cl clearly state, have they got a youth development plan? Is it of a minimum of eight months? And what's included in that eight months? We've already done two or three presentations on periodization and the youth development. So my question is, is that, and, and again, in terms of which coaches have they, they nominated, reluctant to tell them who the coaches are going to be. That's all the stuff that we're working through at the moment, and this is why it's great to see that, the, the, and I'll be honest with you, it is the same faces that come out to these workshops, but hopefully you'll get the value out of it and you see something from it, and then how you actually apply it in your own space that's where you've got the freedom to be able to do that and put it into practice. And, and, and it's fantastic to see the same faces turning up, but we'd like more and more to come along to it, to see them as well. And don't have to agree with everything, and you might put your own spin on it, but it's just that opportunity as well. And like I say, moving forward, everyone harps on about having an A-League in Canberra, but we need to get the NPL right first. If we don't get the NPL right, we've got no chance. And we're getting into a real positive space for some of the clubs. Uh, really encouraging to have 10 applications come through. 10 applications for the NPL and some real strong applications as well. But the more we get this message out and the more that we spread the message far and wide in terms of our own football community, it's only going to put us in a better space as well. Tugnarung advancing to the last 16 in the FFA Cup, massive for ACT. All right, so it's a great, great thing, great achievement. All right, but it's because everyone's sort of starting to pull in the right direction. It's not capital football and the clubs against each other. We're trying to support. We put these on free of charge because we want to support the NPL clubs. We want to try, and the community level as well. We're here to support as often as we can. Oh, the door's always open, like I've said before. So any questions relating to the workshops or the NPL in particular, feel free to pick up the phone. I won't keep you any longer because I know you're freezing cold and you want to get off. Thank you very much for giving up your time this evening. We look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank you.